Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about some good news coming out of the nearest exoplanet to our planet Earth, Proxima Centauri b. Today you're going to learn about the new study that actually analyzed it very thoroughly and found some really cool things. Welcome to What The Math. So, those of you who have been following the channel for a long time should be already pretty comfortable knowing that the closest exoplanet and I guess the closest star to us are uh, in the Proxima Centauri region. Now, it's very difficult to see this without a powerful telescope, uh, but luckily for us, in Space Engine, finding Proxima Centauri is not very difficult, although you can see that it's almost impossible to see it. So, we're going to actually jump to this object. And today we're going to be talking about a study uh, from, a, I think, about a few weeks ago, um, basically September of 2017, uh, that analyzed the system and also the planet around Proxima Centauri and found some really, really cool things about it. Now, first of all, this is the planet itself here. And uh, for the longest time, a lot of bad news were coming out of the system, basically talking about how, well, okay, first of all, Proxima Centauri that you see in the back there is extremely active. It's, it's what's known as a flare star. It flares up a lot and it uh, creates a lot of energy because of those flares that then strike the planet and most likely... Uh, would actually strip it entirely of its uh, atmosphere and possibly liquid water or any water really. And um, ex essentially what it would do is make this a very uninhabitable dry world that would resemble a rock. But that was the original speculation. The new studies, however, specifically the study that I'm talking about, and you can check out the actual study in, um, in the paper in the description below, used uh, what's known as Roke 3D, or I guess it's technically Roke 3D, um, NASA simulator that allows us to um, basically run several algorithms and predict the uh, conditions on Earth. It's a very interesting, very thorough Earth climate simulator, and it works really, really well. You can even check out, um, in the paper that I posted, th there's even a link to a very basic version of it. Um, but they kind of replaced a lot of the parameters, and try to analyze Proxima Centauri using uh, Rock 3D. And they discovered some really cool things using the simulator. Okay, first of all, the first discovery is that there's probably water here, at least in forms of ice and at least on the opposite side of the planet. And it's also very, very likely that that ice, that ice water is um, probably all over the place. As a matter of fact, it's even maybe facing the uh, starlight itself. It might even be right here. And here, this is where um, it's all dependent on how salty the water is. It's either frozen or maybe entirely liquid. And what's interesting is that the simulations seem to show that for the most part, it might actually resemble a, a perfect stereotype of what's known as a, um, an eyeball planet. I've talked about this in one of the previous videos. It basically has one side of the planet that's always exposed to the star's light, um, completely melted, and basically this would be a liquid ocean, and the rest of the planet is sort of just ice. Now, it gets really interesting here because depending on salinity, it might have more or less ice. And also, the simulations showed us that because water transfers heat so well, it would actually not be too cold here either. As a matter of fact, the surface temperature here would be relatively comparable to the temperatures here, especially if the planet has some atmosphere. So, the heat transfer would allow Proxima Centauri b to have relatively comfortable conditions on all sides of the planet, and the water here would be relatively similar in temperature uh, making it, I guess, in some sense, habitable. Now, it's actually in a slightly uh, lower temperature area around its star, so we don't expect this to be a tropical world, um, unless it's not tidally locked. And this was actually another really interesting discovery about this planet. We assumed that it was tidally locked, just like the moons of Jupiter, and just like we assume that many red dwarf planets are tidally locked. But in our solar system, the object that's closest to the Sun, which is Mercury that you see orbiting right there, is actually not tidally locked. 
it has a very interesting resonance, three to two resonance specifically, where for every three rotations um, of the actual planet, it moves around the sun twice. So this 3 to 2 resonance is very stable and it can definitely exist in these systems as well. And so just for the sakes of trying, these scientists actually ran a simulation with a 3 to 2 resonance just to see how the planet would look like. And to their surprise, they discovered that the planet would actually be a tropical world. As a matter of fact, uh, it would not just be a tropical world with liquid water, it would be a very sort of pleasant environment for any kind of life to exist. Now this is where it gets really really interesting and kind of crazy in some sense. It could literally go from being this to being this and thus have uh, an entire ocean full of water that's um, capable of sustaining life, creating life and evolving life. Now it's not 100% certain yet. As a matter of fact, without studying the actual orbital parameters of this planet in a little bit more detail, we're not going to be able to determine what's actually on the surface here. Unfortunately, the planet itself doesn't pass in front of its stars, so we can't even see the atmosphere. But the computer simulations that were ran uh, established that, well, first of all, it really depends on the orbit, but second of all, it really depends on the salinity. And if the water here is really salty, we're very likely going to have liquid water. And if the salinity of this planet is somewhat similar to how much salt there is in, for example, Dead Sea, then there is actually a lot of new things that could be happening on the inside. Now, Dead Sea, unfortunately, has a really bad name because it's not that at all. As a matter of fact, it's a huge, huge environment for a lot of different bacteria that produces amazing, amazing stuff. One of the most interesting bacteria here is this little guy uh, known as uh, Dunaliela. Now, these are the only uh, photosynthesizing bacteria in the Dead Sea. In other words, they actually are capable of producing oxygen. Now, salt water with a lot of these guys means that you could potentially create an entire world with oxygen in the atmosphere. And this is where things get very, very interesting because if something like this evolved on the beautiful Proxima Centauri B, this could imply that the atmosphere is full of oxygen and oxygen plus solar rays could create ozone layer that could protect the atmosphere from other stuff. And most importantly, this could potentially be an extremely well-rounded and habitable world. As a matter of fact, the closest planet to us could potentially be our next home. It could be the closest planet that we could call home. And this means that we need to start studying this planet a lot more. We need to definitely uh, try to find a way to either look at it directly using, for example, James Webb Telescope, or more importantly, actually try to finally send that mission there. The Breakthrough Starshot mission that has been planned um, for the past few years is our, I guess, best chance to get to this particular star system and to finally be able to answer the question of how habitable this world is but most importantly, if we can maybe one day survive there once our own uh, star kind of kills the planet Earth. Uh, the Proxima Centauri system is actually going to live pretty comfortably and, and sort of be sustainable and um, possibly even have habitable planet, at least one habitable planet, uh, for several billion or possibly even trillion years. These red dwarfs, they live a very long time, so we need to launch this mission and we need to do this soon because we need to answer those questions. Is this our new home? And so hopefully within the next uh, 20 to 30 years, we'll actually have an answer to Proxima Centauri B. Is it our new home? Is it habitable? And does it have life there? Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. And hopefully you learned a little bit more about Proxima Centauri B and the new study that discovered some amazing things about it using various simulations. Do check out the paper in the description below and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, don't forget that you can help this channel grow by supporting me on Patreon and also subscribe and maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space. See you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.